Welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. This time around, we'll be focusing on Nigeria's economy. Now, the nation's public debt is set to exceed 50 trillion naira this year, representing a 29.8% increase above the 39.56 trillion naira at the end of 2021. Now, according to the Debt Management Office, DMO, the latest data that is, the national public debt rose by 20% year on year to 39.56 trillion naira in in 2021 from 32.92 trillion naira in 2020. Now the 20% rise in the total public debt was driven by a 25% increase in external debt and 17.3% increase in domestic debt, while total external debt rose to 15.86 trillion naira last year from 12.71 trillion naira in 2020. Domestic debt rose to 23.7 trillion naira in 2021 from 20 to from 20.21 trillion now the preceding year. Now, further analysis showed that most of the increase in the public debt in 2021 was occasioned by the federal government's borrowing activities. Consequently, the federal government's total debt rose by 22.8% or 6.51 trillion naira to 33.12 trillion naira. Now, economist Mokhtar Mohammed joins us now on this discourse. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Thanks for joining us on the breakfast as we look at these issues uh, bordering our economy. My pleasure. Good morning. All right. Uh, so let's talk about Nigeria's public debt. It's as though we are sounding like broken records, if I may say, because over time, we know what the issues are. You know, we keep on borrowing, uh, we keep on uh, mounting a whole lot of debt, and it's as though we are mortgaging our children's uh, future. It's as though, that, uh, as though we, we just don't care what happens uh, in the future, it's just to sort out the issue of now. Why can't we move beyond these huge debts? Uh, unfortunately, I think it's because um, the, the government is not ready to think out of the box. Uh, we are doing the same thing all over again, and we expect a different result. I think that is a major problem. Um, debt in itself, borrowing in itself, is not an issue. Uh, but uh, uh, you have to borrow knowing fully whether you'll be able to pay. The challenge with Nigerian debt is that the government keeps reminding us that our debt to the GDP is what is very normal. But remember, GDP does not pay your debt. Yeah, it's your, it's, it's your, your revenue that you can pay your debt. It's like a man working in a good company and saying that, oh, the company I'm working in is very good, and then you are collecting debt, and yet your salary from that company cannot pay off your debt. So it's all about um, being strategic and knowing what really we are borrowing for. This administration came in with a good borrowing plan, but along the line, I think they, they, they missed it. So um, what exactly are we doing uh, wrong at this point in time? Because uh, if you look at the statistics and the reports, we're looking at hitting 50 trillion naira. Look, 53 trillion naira is not um, what Nigeria cannot pay for. Uh, but what it means is that we will not even have money for capital projects. Uh, and knowing that our budget, about 80% of our budget is for recurrent expenditure. So what we should be looking at as a government that knows what to do, once to begin to see how it can reduce the cost of governance. And then instead of borrowing for Abuja, Kaduna, Kano, Kaduna, Lagos, Ibadan, Onicha, Enugu, what we should be doing is we should be using those uh, projects as equity so that we can do the PPP. And then with that PPP, then the government will not be spending so much. All right, uh, Mukta, over time we've talked about, uh, you know, looking inward and, uh, you know, generating more internal, internal revenue from the country. But over time, the issue has always been that we are uh, just uh, one-sided. We're always focusing on, you know, oil. You know, we're just a, a mono-economy. They have yeah, because we, we are not strategic in our thinking. And the only time we talk about... Um, um, uh, uh, diversifying the economy is when the price of oil is down. Once the price of oil goes up, we, we forget about diversification. We go back to our normal ways of, um, of doing things, especially when the revenue from oil is still coming in. 
Unfortunately, this time we are having it tough because the revenue of oil has actually gone up. I mean, in terms of the price of food has gone up. And because our refineries are not working, a lot of things are not being done well. So we are, we are having the challenge of um, uh, um, trying to meet up, especially what we gain in the high price of food oil. We lost it in the, price, in, in, in the area of um, subsidy payment. So with that, we are not thinking inward. Now, how do you think in what you think about revenue generation? Now, how do you think about revenue generation? You think of two ways. You either increase taxes or you use taxes as a means to attract investment. And those investments will in turn create jobs. And those jobs and those companies will not pay its taxes. Unfortunately, we're still not looking at that. What we think about our own tax is how to get tax for revenue. We are not thinking about how can use tax to grow our informal sector which will be a cash cow in the area of revenue. So until we do that, we keep on going to the simplest way. We do to the, main, the simple form of borrowing, which is going, going to borrow from, uh, from, from, from international lenders. But they're always ready to give it to us because they know that our assets, even in the terms of our cook oil, is able to pay those debts. They don't think about how we will to do other projects in the nation. So I think the government should begin to think out of the box then sometimes, like I said, instead of you just looking at those, um, those projects and saying, oh, the government will want to do it with borrow money, why can't you do the public-private partnership like it's done all over the world, right. whereby the government now use those projects as an equity to attract the public, the, the private companies, to come and buy into that and, 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 maybe, and, and finish that project, and you give them 25 years to recoup their money that they have spent on those projects. And after they recoup their money, then you, you, you take it from there. Oh, and yeah, then you have created a job. Mm. You remember that these companies will still pay tax from the revenue they are generating. So it's a win-win situation for both for you, and especially for the government. So you have more money to put into social investment, like education and healthcare. All right, Mukta, we'll come back. We'll take a quick break now, but we'll come back and talk about the Finance Act of 2021, how we can actually explore that to deepen the economy. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and return with more. Do join us again. All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we'll still have Mukta Mohammed, an economist, uh, joining us as we look at um, the issues uh, in our economy vis a vis the rising debt profile of um, the nation's economy. Uh, Mukta, just before we went on that break, we we're talking about um, you know, tax taxation and how we can actually explore all of that you know, to show up all of these um, you know, deficits that we have. One would have thought that the would, uh, Finance Act of 2021 would have actually explored that to the extent that uh, we can be uh, getting more or driving more revenue from uh, or driving more, driving more people into the tax net? Well, getting more people into the tax net is not, uh, it's not rocket science. As for, but again, uh, when it comes to tax payment, we must have the structure. So what are those structures that are used to capture those in the tax bracket? It's not just by going to an office and feel that this office have a very good building. That is where they, I mean, they are making a lot of money. So you cannot give them taxes. Because they got, some of them just happen, the government just come and climb down on the company and just give them as strenuous, that is how much you are owing. They lack structures to do that. So if we really want to do tax payment, then we need to begin to look at building the structures. And so that is one. Then secondly, you need to build structures for the informal sector. Because a situation whereby the informal structure provides practically everything for themselves, you, you don't think such people will not come voluntarily to begin to pay tax? So, but when you build infrastructure for them, you attract them to say, this is what we have done for you. So by buying and value this, you should be able to pay your tax so that we can do more. That is how, so that is how we can attract the informal sector. The informal sector in any economy are the largest tax bracket. When we talk about the informal sector, like in Nigeria, you'll be talking about the woman that is selling something, or the, the one that has the bathing saloon, the, man that, the woman that has a hairdressing saloon, even the man that rides an Okada on the road that you cook. So there's a lot of it, the, the, the downfall driver. It, those are the informal sectors. So how do you attract them? You create revenue. And then you put structures. 
So by that, you'll be able to, they will be able to say, okay, we need to pay our tax so that government can do more for us. But where by the informal structure provides practically everything for himself, and you're not telling him to come and pay tax, it's always a difficult thing to do. All right. Uh, Muktak Mohammed, uh, let's also look at the fact that if, if you look at the Buhari administration, I mean, if you look at this government, it feels like we have tripled, uh, you know, the debt profile compared to the previous government and not to make any kind of blames. But on, on the long run, you have uh, the government running this budget deficit. I mean, uh, we've been running on this for a very, very long time, even when you have the oil prices on a high. I mean, we are very dependent on oil prices. The economy is a, a mono economy, so we're highly dependent on the uh, exchange from you know, oil proceeds, how, however you want to put it. So even when the prices are high, we, we're still running the budget deficit, and that's what the government has been doing over time consecutively. Why is this the situation? Because we are running a deficit, number one, because our revenue is low. Now that you're talking about the price of oil going up, remember, like what I said, we are now paying most on, more on subsidies. Because when the price of food goes up, that means the price of subsidy, the cost of subsidy goes up. Initially, the government was budgeting about three trillion, but at the last time, the president has sent a budget of four trillion the National Assembly. So that's an increment of about one trillion naira. So that is a major challenge. So the rising price, the rising cost, I mean the rising price of crude is not good news to Nigeria because we are still a nation that depends for almost 80 to 90 percent of our refined petroleum product outside the shore of this country. So that is basically all the challenges. All right, Mukta, there's also the talk of um, this issue of um, fuel subsidy, which has um, actually resulted in um, the government uh, uh, of a, a budget uh, request of 2.56 trillion now to fund fuel subsidy from July to uh, December of this year. How do we get past this? <laughs> the only way we can get past this is if the refineries are working. One. Then secondly, if the government also will take a cut on their revenue. Now, how do I say they take a cut on their revenue? Remember that when these um, products land the Nigerian port, especially enter the Nigerian water, there's a lot of charges that are being charged by government agencies. NEMASA, MPE, Nigeria Reve the Revenue Commission. A lot of charges comes in. Are government ready to take a bite on their revenue? That will bring down the cost of the petroleum product. That could indirectly, then you will remove subsidy, then the, 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 the cost of refined product will not be too high. It was the comrade governor then that um, Adam Oshoma let us say this, that immediately the, 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 the product hit the Nigerian water, the cost goes up by almost 30%. So government needs to look at that uh, to take a chunk, to not just pushing everything to the, to the people. So by the time we do that, you will be able to remove subsidy on, on petroleum products without the astronomical rise in price in the price of, of, of refined petroleum products. But if you do it as it is now, with the cost of higher price this high, with re government not ready to take a bite on their revenue, you could see the price of crude oil go, I mean, uh, price of refined petroleum product going as high as 400. And that will impoverish the already impoverished Nigeria. So basically, that's the challenge. So, um, uh, would you also agree, talking about the challenge now, and you have a lot of uh, experts, I mean, your colleagues who are saying that Nigeria is faced with a double challenge of low revenue, uh, revenue base, and also a huge infrastructural gap. Is that really a current reality? That is the current reality. But like I said, government is not thinking like all, what all governments are, all governments all over the world are thinking now. Most governments all over the world now are not thinking about PPP. Remember the American infrastructure bill that was, that was just uh, passed by the, the current president, by Joe Biden. It's all about PPP. No government is ready to put all its revenue into infrastructure. 
what they do is try to partner with the private sector. We have seen that happen in the Apapa Road up to uh, up to um, the the the, 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 the um, um, house, uh, to Ibadan. Yeah, I mean not to Ibadan to, to the toll gate in Lagos. It's been done by a company. So we we'll see the second Niger Bridge also being handled by a Nigerian Sovereign Wealth Fund, and then the government partnering it. So, so what you do is use the PPP. So what happens in the PPP is, PPP is that the private sector builds those infrastructures for you and manage it for a number of years and to recoup their money that they spend in there. The, if the private sector is not going to manage it for a number of years, then you give them tax brackets for a number of years for them to recoup what they are spent on infrastructure. We see that also going to happen in the, in, in, in the Murtala Mohamed International Airport that was recently commissioned by the president. That was a PPP project. So you need to begin to look at PPP, especially when you don't have the uh, enough to carry out this project because of your revenue uh, shortfall. Oh, but, but, ahead, okay, no, just, just before, you know, Justin comes in. Uh, a typical example, I mean, we want to see how effective the PPP system is because we have states or oh, maybe a state in Nigeria that has been very strong on the PPP. I mean, I would talk about the Cross River State Government signing the PPP, uh, you know, being part of the PPP arrangement. And if you look at the state right now, there's really nothing to write home about. So um, how effective is the PPP arrangement? Do we also well, the need... PPP, the PPP arrangement that Cross River State goes into was not implemented by the incoming administrations. That was what happened. Remember the PPP arrangement you're talking about? I'm sure you're talking about the uh, TINAPA. TINAPA B, uh, no, be, be beyond the TINAPA. TINAPA, I mean, if you probably get um, all of that signing and agreement that uh, you would have some PPP arrangement, over time you hear the government saying we're partnering, but at the end of the day, there's almost nothing to show for. Because they are, they are, they are not doing it sincerely. Look, we have seen the PPP now work. Did you see it work? We see it work in the, in the Apapa Road, up from, from Apapa as far as Bojudu uh, Bega. We are seeing that work because government have decided to be sincere in that. We see the PPP also work in, 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 in the second Niger Bridge. It's been sold by the Nigerian Sovereign Wealth Fund with the government bringing some part of the funding. I just mentioned the Motala Mohammed International Airport that was just commissioned now, the terminal that was just commissioned now. That was a PPP arrangement. Okay, remember Motala Mohammed 2, MMM 2, the local win. That's a PPP arrangement and it's still working. So what so happens if the PPP the arrangement does not meet, uh, you know, sincerity of the, uh, the elite, the ruling class? Let me tell you why it doesn't meet, because every ruling Every new administration wants to have a chunk of cake because of corruption. Because government is supposed to be a continuous process. But when they come in there, they begin to put a lot of demands on the PPP. That is the, the background of where you see some of these things does not, do, not, do, not, do not succeed. Go and confirm it's corruption. Oh, That's okay. why. Right, you have no reason not to succeed. An agreement has been put in place. The private sector have committed their, their resources to it. The only PPP that the federal government has entered that did not succeed, remember, it was the uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And like you said, it was given to an elite that was not even an engineer. But when the government felt that it was not going to succeed, they took it from him and they took it themselves and they have been doing it now. And now what are they going to do in that road? They are going to tow that road. So it all bears down on integrity and sincerity on the part of both parties, both the PPP and the government, especially the government. Because if I'm a PPP person, I'm not coming there for charity. I'm using my company money to develop the project. I want to make profit. That is capitalism. All right. Uh, as we uh, just uh, wrap up all of this now, it's not just about the federal government that is involved in this, uh, you know, debt uh, profiling and everything. Let's look at, let's look closely 
at the state governments, for instance, because they also do their own borrowings, they also do their own project and every other thing. You know, and most of the states are blessed with a whole lot of um, resources they, they, that they could explore to you know, build their own state. Why are they not looking in that direction? Okay, number one, when you talk about resources, remember that no state government owns any resources in this country. That is one of the issues that the we have. Government because of the constitution. Mm. So that is a constitutional problem. Sometimes you will not blame the state government. The only time you need to look at the state government is how much of infrastructure have they, paid, have they, have they, have they been able to do in their state to begin to tax their to tax businesses there. So most of the government are not doing anything. And so they are not ready to put the body more on the people. And some of them also see government as a social uh, investment. They don't see government as what you use to generate revenue. How many states can really stand on themselves if they don't go to the federation? If, I mean, it was just released of recent that almost 24 states did not attract a single foreign direct investment. Because there's no, there's no specific project or they are not even thinking on how to bring in projects. They are always depending on the federation account. A state like Lagos, where Lagos is thriving, is because of the private companies that are most located in Lagos. So they were they able to generate internet generated revenue. Even if you have to question sometimes the way they go about it. So states that can begin to do that should begin to provide. Look at Lagos. Lagos is trying to improve security. And even partner with the private sector to improve security. So Lagos is trying to build infrastructures for the businesses to grow. Look at power. It's not that it's said on, like Lagos cannot provide their own independent uh, power plant. But the constitution does not support it. So sometimes when it comes to revenue from the side of the government, it's not just because the government are not thinking out of the box but because there's a constitutional issue. All right. Thank you so much, Mokhtar Mohammed, for all of the thoughts that you have shared with us and how we can improve on um, what we have and uh, not mortgage um, uh, the nation and our children's uh, future as regards uh, the rise in debt profile. We do appreciate your time, Mokhtar. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, it is still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take yet another break. And this time around, when we retail, we'll be looking at the 35% affirmative action for women in a moment to join us again. <laughs>